Hey there. <clears throat> so I want to do a, a little quick Bible study here, and it's based upon um, things I've seen going on. Oh, hush, boy, in the world today. And it all revolves around uh, people becoming fascinated with, uh, you know, all kind of goodly thing, uh, things of the world, whether that's baptism, whether that's rosary beads, whether that's um, prayer candles, whether that's statues, whether that's pictures of the Lord and pictures of the baby angels and big angels with wings and things like that. And, you know, some people will go and they'll pray to it and they'll, they'll pray beside it, they'll pray to a cross, they'll pray to a man, they'll pray to with things in their hand. But I just want to show you something about our faith in Christ. Our faith in Christ isn't uh, shouldn't be placed upon uh, menial things like physical things rather. You know, <clears throat> it shouldn't be when you go kneel down, you go to an altar and pray. You, when you kneel down or at a pew or whatever, in front of a pew, or I mean, from a pew, whatever, or, or sorry, a pulpit, not pew, you know, or, or or some kind of bench, or you put a book in front of your church that is the Bible, you know, and everything, and that's put in this cat and it's put parted open halfway, whatever, through the Bible. That doesn't mean anything. What the Bible should be in your hand, not sitting on a, a table in front of everybody <clears throat> you know open up <laughs> you know what I mean um, anyway there's things like that there's um you know trivial things maybe I can bring up or whatever but I just wanted to point out uh, that you know we, we spend so much of our time in church um, just you know uh, worrying about the bills, worrying about, well, not worrying about it so much, but just what the church says we should and shouldn't do, and things like that. And it's all superficial. It really means nothing. And there's nothing spiritual about it as far as those things were concerned, like a bill or getting the grass cut or maintaining the church building and things like that. People forget that the body of Christ isn't the church organization that you go to. The body of Christ is not so-and-so Baptist church. The body of Christ is every single believer by faith who believes in what Christ Jesus has done for them. You know, sound doctrine will produce sound speech. So if you're going by God's word, you're going to be speaking God's word. And there was another one. I forgot what it was. I had it all. Sound doctrine will produce sound faith which is produce sound faith speech so if it's sound if it's in Christ Jesus if it's a spiritual thing then we're going to be looking for things of the spirit not things after what our church looks like or the grass is cut uh, having a picture in our room with Jesus on it or having rosary beads or having a cross that we pray to prayer candles or going to a man for absolution of sins uh, things like that, what, what Catholics do, and you know, all doesn't matter. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is when you go to Matthew, people make this like church membership. I don't know I talked about this before. Church membership, they make it into such a big deal that you got to go to church, you got to tithe, you got to this, you got to that, you know, and you got to be part of the ministry. You got to be an officer in the church. And the Bible does not say anything about that. But as far as baptism and everything, and if you go to chapter 28 of bat, no, I'm sorry, but yeah, anyway, uh, and go to this last verse here. It says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations." What does it say right there? See if I can touch it and then behind the lights. Right there in that word. It says teach, right? All nations. Okay, so how they were they taught? Jesus taught the twelve disciples, right? Eleven now, as you see right here. Touching it, it's touch screen. <laughs> okay, so there's eleven. 
teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost. Now, a guy brought this up yesterday. Let me show you what he said here. Um, there's a little confusion. We'll get right back to that. And I, I thought I was confused to what he said at first, but I'm like, oh yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got exactly what you're saying. So let's see what it says here. Um, where was it at? My history library. This is interesting. What he said to me. I commented on the. Well, what happened? Uh, let's see here. Home. Key. This is not going to turn out like I was hoping it would. Okay, let me just go to this. My channel. Okay, videos. Okay, here it is. So, <clears throat> I, was, I was talking about baptism in the church. And... This is what he said. Um, okay, what did he say here? All right, he says, "You never see in the Book of Acts none of the apostles say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Only one name they used. It was the name of Jesus." First John five seven King James Version clearly shows you the three in one. Yes, Trinity. And he said, "I said that's right." He indicates this, but doesn't say that they must be baptized people in water by the Godhead. He said to teach them, and the teaching is the baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the teaching is something that's invisible. Okay, it's not being, it's like, okay, you're part of the church now, so we're going to be like you with Philip. Now, now, if somebody wants to be baptized, that's totally up to them. Now, like the eunuch, we were talking about last time, the eunuch, he was baptized. Um, by Philip, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be baptized and think that does something for you, great. You know, that's not against the Bible, it's not for it. I mean, it's not, you know, what have you. <clears throat> but this, I'm not talking about baptism per se. I'm getting to a point, I'm building to like what I call a crescendo kind of thing here. <laughs> uh, he said something Jesus did say in Matthew 28, Kelly. King JV is Jesus a liar. I guess he was asking me a question. It speaks a little bit of French. I mean, uh, Spanish. Jesus' own word says in Matthew 28 and 29. Let's see what it says here. Uh, hush. There's no verse. 29. I think he meant 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so I asked him, what, what are you saying exactly? And he says, Baptist churches use that verse to say that you must name the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And glad to am no more a Baptist 11 years, I left a Baptist church. And my thing was saying, oh, I see, yeah, it's man-made tradition. We don't need denominations and buildings where we sit in pews while a pastor with a degree in theology from a Bible college or seminary preaches to us what the Greek or Hebrew means. When English is all we need, the body of Christ is any, um, um, and every believer, not so and so church buildings, in and of itself, there's not a lot wrong with a building. We lose focus on the true meaning of church when we let denominationalism take over and legalism slips in, and then we aren't going by the perfect word, which is a King James Version Bible. People don't want, that. that's my opinion, people don't want to get out of traditionalism either. It's all we know, it seems. Faith cometh by hearing the word. Same with Thomas. He saw, he believed. But Jesus uh, said, blessed are those who believe and didn't see him. That's my word. So it's not about pictures or statues or etc. It's about a matter of the spirit by seeing with spiritual eyes, not some ornate steeple and pretty sanctuary. So if the Lord said, blessed are those that have not seen him, he will make it known by his word that we believe in him by hearing his word. And that was the whole point um, of this.
the video anyway. I just forgot about it. But I'm just not reading this. Like, oh yeah, I forgot it. I remember now. It has to be perfect, and it is. So what I'm trying to get into here is, um, uh, we don't have to see the Lord Jesus to know that He's real, right? Thomas saw Him, and he, you know, he was there already. And my Lord and my God, that after he saw the scars in his hand and his feet and his side, he said, "My Lord and my God," you know, and you know, and so and Jesus said, "Well, blessed are those," you know, if we go back to it. Um, wait a minute, let's read the rest of this. Who have not seen, yet have not seen, but do believe. You know, what a blessing that is, because it's not about uh, um, uh, seeing the Lord. You know, it's by faith that we're saved. It's not by uh, what we can touch, what we can feel, or whether it's on a picture, whether it's in whatever we every time we open our bible up we see the lord jesus if we have god's spirit in us we see him because we see him by his words and with that being said he says uh, he said i said uh, sorry he will make it known by his word that we believe in him by hearing his word if we hear what he says he says if you love me follow you know do what you know do my commandments you know and so, um, if you love me, you know, follow what I say, you know, and that tells us, we shows us we love him because we listen to what he says, not in our own, of our own selves, but by the Holy Spirit in us. And like I said here, it has to be perfect, and it is, God's word it is. So if we go to Matthew 28, um, 18, 19, 20 again, it says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. He's not telling, he didn't say, you go. He said, go ye. There's several people he's talking to. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. So, the baptism isn't being dunked in water so much as it is, which is nothing wrong with that. As I'm trying to say, I'm not discounting that. Why would I? It's not a physical manifestation. It's a spiritual manifestation. See what I'm saying? Baptizing them, the teaching, go ye therefore, being Jesus has all the power given to me in heaven and earth, he says, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So when people hear the teaching of the Lord through the disciples, which became apostles, it baptized them in the Holy Spirit. You know, and the Holy Spirit was there anyway, superseding everything, uh, uh, superintending everything. And it comes to people, and it says, um, no one can come to the Father, you know, except by Him, you know, by the Lord. And it says, teaching them, see there's teach again, you got teach right there, and you got teach again right here. Teaching, teach all nations, teaching, it's a process, them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So that's what it says there. And if you go to John fourteen twenty six, you see, you know, uh, what it's saying there. Um, he shall teach. He shall teach you all things whatsoever I have said unto you. You know. So that's another thing. Uh, let's go there real quick. John fourteen twenty six. I like this video thing. <laughs> I don't know how long we get to keep it though. It's called debut. He says about the Comforter, right here, about the Comforter, which is it, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all what things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Yep. It says these things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you 
but the comforter which is all ghost from whom you know he's going to go up now he's going to ascend up high and this is what he tells him he said you shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you okay now let's go where's my darn board thing at? uh john John 4.24, I'll show you something else here. 4.24, so we're backing up really. And here. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God with flesh and blood and uh, 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 ritualistic stuff or religious stuff or or you know you can't please him that way you can't give him anything to please him right so it's a matter of faith and uh, if you read the above verse there it's pretty neat but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth Notice he said, true worshipers, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father, for the Father seeketh such to worship him, who do what? Who worship him in spirit and in truth. God is his spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He tells us twice here. To worship the Father, you must do it in spirit and in truth. To, uh, Because he's a spirit. God is a spirit. So we must worship him in spirit and truth. So that's pretty neat. This is really awesome to see that how God wants us to communicate with him. Not by um, going to a church so much and reading uh, hymnals or whatever and doing I mean or well that's nothing wrong with that don't get me wrong I'm not trying to say that going to it what I'm saying is going to some kind of function and doing something for somebody some kind of service and making God happy you're going to a football game and playing uh, and praying that the, the best team would win and stuff like that which is the the team that doesn't that's, that's more sportsman like God does not into that I don't think, <laughs> I don't think God, like I tell my son, I don't think God has a favorite football team. You know, it's, um, he's, he's with those who believe in him, and it's by faith. He doesn't, um, he, he doesn't um, root for just any one particular person or group. He roots for those who are, um, well, not even roots, but I mean, he's for those who believe in him, who have faith in him. Who don't just give him lip service by what they say and don't say some kind of prayer or whatever you know out loud and get the attention of others oh god this god that you know and such and such or right? speaking weird glossolalia or something like that and don't know nobody knows what it said you know you know and like the Zusa street revival like these people do in swagger ministries or whatever um i'm not just condoning them or whatever but God is not impressed with you with your visuals okay he's not impressed with your ornate uh, fish looking uh, Catholic looking uh, miter on your head he's not um, impressed with your how pretty your Bible is and all the gold gilding and everything he wants you to know the words in that Bible and he wants you to have the right one he's not impressed with the crucifix He's not, he's not impressed with how big your house is, or how small it is, or how pretty your car is, or how dinky looking it is. Is that you worship him in spirit and truth, by faith. You know? And that's what faith is. It's spirit and it's truth. You worship God in faith. Because you trust in what you, you, you can't see him. You don't know where he is in any one moment as a, of a person. But you know he's there. You know he's in your heart. You know, and that's why the Lord told Thomas, "He's like, yeah, you know, there are people who haven't seen me yet; they will believe." You know, and that's why it says here, uh, 
But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He wants true worshippers. Not superficial ones, not those who um, who are so worried about what, the way the church looks, or who, who are so ingrained about uh, naming it, give it a proper name, or paying tithes, or something like that, or going by church bylaws, or, or having an insurance program, or having someone, you know, that, that doesn't matter. God brings his people together. It's by the body of Christ. It's not by the assembly of a church. Any one person who is a saved soul in Christ Jesus and another soul besides that person, they are the body of Christ. Yeah, and it does say, do not forsake the assembly of yourself as some yet, you know, are. Um, but, you know, uh, it doesn't say go into a, a big building, does it? It doesn't say have a, a program for the kids or a program for the adults and seniors and classrooms and this, that, and the other. Because a lot of people back at that, back at that time, they did it together. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, and going to church and building. But I'm just saying, the people back in the um, first century, they did that by going to each other's houses. And of course, they had uh, overseers and they had deacons, you know, things like that. And they had people who served others, not because they wanted to get something out of it, it's because they wanted to do it, you know. And, um, let's see here. Which is my own? Which is my own? John 6, 63. And, let's see here. John 6, verse 63. It's way down here. <coughs> it is the spirit that quickeneth. That is, gives life, you know. The flesh profiteth nothing. Where the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Life. Because the spirit quickeneth. Right? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the book that we have has to be the right book. It has to be the perfect word of God. If it's not, it is not spirit and it is not life. But I, me for myself, and I'm sure for my son, that the book we know we have, that is spirit in his life. Now, so if God tells us something and we don't see him, but he tells us to trust in his word and the words that he speaks unto us, if it's spirit in life, it, it's just the same as saying being Jesus is the living word. It is Jesus. You know, the word is the Lord. The things that he says to us, you know, is his word, you know, and um, the things that I say unto you, um, you know, what do you say about the Holy Spirit? Uh, he shall teach you all things whatsoever I have sent unto you, you know, and um, his word is, is high. I mean, his, how did he go? It, he, he puts everything into what he says and means, you know. Um, how did he say it? Oh, dang on it. I see here. Um, let me just ask this thing here. What God thinks about his own words. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm kind of not communicating this right, but um, God, God, the Lord. He puts an emphasis on the things that he says. When he tells you something, he, he tells you with clarity. And the reason why people don't understand that is because they don't have the spirit for it to, to, to wear a flesh. And all things spiritual must be a spiritual. 
2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 2.13, and we'll get that in just a second here. Um, but there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew them from the beginning, who would believe not in him, who would betray him. Uh, there we go, and it says, And he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. For that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him, then Jesus said, unto the twelve, will ye also go away? And Peter says, Simon, then Simon Peter says, answer, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas, his carrot, the son of Simon, for he was, it was that should betray him, be one of the twelve. Okay, so um, let's get this right here, John twenty and twenty nine. I wrote some of this down. Twenty and twenty nine. Yeah, this is talking about Thomas again. And um, he told Thomas in, you know, 26 year. I like Thomas because Thomas reminds me of who I'm up. Well, my name is Thomas and I'm about faith and believing, you know. I got to see Jesus to know and believe him. I got to see the, I got to see Jesus. I got to see his picture. I got to see his statue. I got to see the bones. I got to see the tomb to believe. I got to see something to believe, you know. But, but what does faith come by? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, right? So, um, let's see here. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. You see me, you believe. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet have believed. Because it's not about pictures. It's not about, um, again, churches. It's not about, um, you know, some kind of representation who Jesus was. And this. it's not about a, even a cross on your arm, being tattooed on your arm. or it's, It talks about a cross course, you know, what Jesus died on. It's not about having, you know, like your, every Easter, Jesus, he is risen, having a cross or some kind of um, purple thing over it. It's not about that. Those things are are distractions, really. If you want to know the truth, they're distractions. You know, uh, really, God wants us to read His Word. He wants us to be sure on what we have, His infallible Word. And, you know, that what we have is His, you know, is His bond. Not only is His bond, but it's everything, you know. It's 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 higher than anything, God's word, you know, and so um, and it tells us in the first part of John. If we go back here, take a look. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. John the Baptist. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go back to John 20, 29. Did I go there yet? Yeah, I did. Okay. Because thou hast not hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet had believed. So you are why are we, why are we so worried about what our church looks at like? Why are we so worried about what we look like? You know whether we're poor or rich, whether our hair is short, whether we look funny or not, whether we're cross-eyed and whether we're buck tooth. You know whether one ear is higher than another or whatever. You know whatever the figure, figure, physical features we have or disfigurements we have why are we worried about it because God doesn't see that he sees the heart you know 
That's what he looks at. He looks at the heart. And he tells us that. God sees the heart. He doesn't see the flesh. The flesh is weak. It profits nothing. And I think this is the next one that talks about that. Uh, Romans 10, 17. There we go there. Romans. Uh, yeah, that was John six sixty three, I believe. Six sixty three. Flesh profiteth nothing. Or is that speak to you they are life? Oh, uh, let's see here. Go right there real quick. Okay, let's see. These people have synagogues. We have churches, but a synagogue is a place, a building. And then they say, well, a church replaces a synagogue. Well, a church is a place or a building in the mind of some people, but no, really, a church is the people, not the steeple. Like a synagogue was a, a steeple, a place, a meeting house for the Jews. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, so let's go to Romans 10, 17. Let's show you here. Oh, we go right here. 10, 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God that's how faith comes oh don't start her so then faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God it doesn't mean you have to see some kind of angelic figure and believe in God it doesn't mean that you have to get in the car like oh I believe in Jesus now I saw the light and believe in God by the Son, the Jesus Christ, that is. It doesn't mean any of that. Faith cometh by hearing the true words of God, the true words of Jesus Christ. We're talking about John fourteen twenty six, the Holy Spirit bringing all things into our remembrance, to our remembrance. That's how faith comes, because we know and hear God's word. And God's word has to be pure and has to be holy for us to have that faith. And the words that you see in front of you, right there, they're pure, pure words. Pure good words mean there's a pure God who cares about what you know. He cares about what you learn. If not, he would have, there was a Bible would be, there would be no creation whatsoever, actually. If there was not a pure and perfect God. A pure and perfect God makes pure and perfect words for you to perfectly and purely understand. How about that? I'm going to let my dog in real quick, out real quick and wrap back. disobedient and gainsaying people they won't listen and the more they don't listen the more they just want to try to get the last word in right verse 21 here there we go right okay all right so what was my next one that i want to go to mm, so for whosoever to call upon the name of the lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 
does that say? I'm going to focus on that too. Does that preacher have to be a pastor? No. It doesn't. Not all preachers are pastors, but all pastors are preachers. See what I'm saying? So, a good part of that word is reach. Yeah, if you kind of highlight it a certain way, hold it down right. Reach. Yeah, reach with God's word. So, how shall they hear without a preacher? That's what uh, the apostles were. They they teach and they preach, preach and teach. You know, and um, that's how they knew. That's how they knew God, uh, God the kingdom of the Lord, because of the preaching of the word. As it says down here, um, uh, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. Because it has to be preached to them and taught to them by the, um, the men who were teaching and preaching, not in and of themselves, but by the Holy Spirit. As it says again, John fourteen twenty six. Okay, so let's go do Romans ten seventeen. Well, that is Romans ten seventeen. Sorry, let's go do First Corinthians um, two thirteen. First Corinthians two thirteen. The next one, and I love this one. I remember right before I started reading Authorized Version Bible, King James Bible. This was just. The Lord just put this in my head and it just pounded in my head. It just made all the difference. Okay, so we're in chapter 1. I'm going to go to chapter 2. 13. Okay, I like reading a little ahead too. But God hath revealed unto them, unto us, them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Right. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Hello. You think those apostles were teaching man's wisdom? Do you think they were te teaching Bible colleges? Do you think they were teaching Hebrew and Greek? Greek sorry. Uh, um, you know, things like that. Seminary courses? No. No, they were teaching this word. God's word. They weren't teaching none of that stuff, but yet... A pastor, a person come, goes up for ministry. Oh, I need to go to seminary. I need to go to Bible college. I need to get a bachelor of degrees in theology, whatever. Blah 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 blah. A master's degree, whatever theology. And they come to church and they are constantly trying to teach the Hebrew and the Greek. Well, this means this, and that means that. You can elucidate this word by the many. Uh, what do you call it? That is the. Uh, Oh, the different meanings. Oh, crap, I forgot the darn what you call that word. Let's expound upon it by reading the Greek word, which means this, also means that, and also means this, and also means that. Oh, uh, well, what's the word for that? Oh, well, well you know, several different um, meanings to a word. <clears throat> okay, so, but which the Holy Ghost te teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually, spiritually discerned. The things of God are spiritually discerned, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So what do you have to have to know God's Word, to spiritually discern it? Not give your own private interpretation of it, which is some, what some men do, most a good bit of them do. 
and that's why they're coming out with their own Bibles and stuff, and you know that's why they're coming out with the um, well the Greek says it like this, God said it like that, you know, and you know, and um, yeah, those things are spiritually discerned, not by those who with higher education or things like that, you know. Uh, but like it says here, um, uh, but not with the wisdom of man. Uh, let's see here. Where, did, where was that? It's not by not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. So what matters most in this? What is telling you in the Bible? What's it telling you in the Bible here? Which matters most? Does it matter what Joe Blow on the pulpit says? Or does it matter what the Holy Ghost teacheth? It's not what man's wisdom teacheth. And a golly, he's got a bunch of wisdom, man. Does. Don't we? We have a bunch of wisdom. And our churches are so ornate and big and huge and stuff like that. And some churches are even way bigger than that. And their wisdom teaches, oh, you got to have a nice church. you got to have a nice pew. you got to have a nice pulpit. you got to have a nice baptistry, uh, sanctuary, or fellowship hall, nice classrooms, you know, things like that. You got to make sure there's money going in. You got to tithe. You got to get dumped in the water to become a member of the church. And all that leads to nothing but worldliness. Man's wisdom and traditionalism and legalism and all the other isms which we don't need okay so but he that is a spirit judges all things yet he himself is judging no man for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ because of salvation of Jesus because by faith come by hearing hearing the word of God the Holy Spirit is the one that speaks to our heart and he shall teach us all things, right? And so we spiritually discern those things, not give our own private interpretation of those things. That's what's important, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so we go got one more here. All right, Hebrews 11, 5, 6. Hebrews 11, 5, 6. That's what it is. Five and six. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for um, before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God by what? Faith. God. Enoch pleased God by faith. Not the things that he did, not the things that he said, not his sins, because we all sin. But it's my faith that pleased God. It's by faith that Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he attained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being did yet speaketh. Word to powerful. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed. It's not talking about. Don't get us in your head now. Don't, it's not talking about other earths and other planets. It's talking about times past. The time, the civilizations, civilizations of times past. The words were framed. The worlds were framed by the word of God. You know, and so it's not talking about some other planet. It's not talking about aliens out there. It's not talking about ETs or nothing like that. That's foolishness. So that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. That's faith. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. One more time. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Which what we can see. Is that something? So, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder 
for them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's pretty cut and dry, pretty simple. It's not about spiritual. It's not about pleasing God with your flesh. It's not about pleasing God with how you pray, when you pray, what time of day you pray, whether you're at your bed or in your car or whatever. I mean, those things are humble in ways and stuff. I, you know, those things have their own importance to some people, but I believe it's the fact that how we go to the Lord, you know, and how we call upon His name and ask Him for help and in our times of trouble and despair and your grief and things like that, you know, and I do that every day. I sin every single day. I mess up every single day. I am not worthy to even be called a child of the King, uh, of the Lord, you know, and I screw up daily. I really do. And, um, I guess I'm not going to stop screwing up until I get translated like Enoch was. And, you know, and, um, or however, whatever that meant. And, um, you know, and start living in a wholesome and pure way, you know, to be seen as I am seen, you know. And so, um, we're all going to mess up. We're all going to do things that we regret. We're all going to, um, you know, say things that we shouldn't say, you know. But it's not about going out here and trying to get God's attention and say, hey, look what I did here, Lord. I give this person such and such a money and I donated to the church. I, I went out to the soup kitchen. And I served people, what have you. Because there are going to be people in heaven and say, Lord, when did we do this? When did we do that? And the Lord said, what have you done to Lisa? This is also what you've done to me. And other people are like, you know, um, Lord, have we not? Did you not see us do this? Did you not see us do that? I mean, we did all this for you. We did all these work for you. You know, you see that? And the Lord's like, I never knew you. <laughs> because it's not about that. It's about faith. Through faith, we understand that worlds were framed by the Word of God. Wow. Okay. Um. So, baptism. Does it matter? to be a part of a church the church whatever church that might be whatever matter church Methodist Episcopalian or Pentecostal or whatever or Methodist or what have you whatever church that might be might think is important but what's more important what's more important what the more important baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith and hearing the Word of God how the we will not know the Word of God Unless it is preached to us, it preaches us here by his by his own word, by the Holy Spirit. It preaches to us. You know, He should teach you all things, whatever I've sent unto you. You know, we have it right here. It has to be pure, as God is pure. It has to be holy, as God is holy. These are God's own words. This is the words of Jesus Christ. You know, this word the words of God. So they have to be pure. They can't be altered, they can't be messed up, they can't be construed you know, or misconstrued or whatever. They can't be interpreted privately. And I want to go to Second Peter real quick. I think it's 2.16. Uh, right here. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Private interpretation. Man, a person did not say anything he wanted to say. Um, or, or, you know. It, well, private interpretation is just that simple. Okay, well this is what it says. And this is what I think it says. And so that's what it means to me. You know. And that's that's the authority. No, Peter, Peter says, "On the first that no prophecy of the scriptures of any in private interpretation." So therefore, what are we doing with other Bible versions? You know, 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, like it does today. Prophecy comes in a and and today by other virgins, by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, not because of what they were taught by the men, not because of their Bible college or seminary or how they wanted to get in good with something or someone else to get a benefit or to fulfill the lucre, like some people do today. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by Him, by the Spirit of God. They were moved by the Spirit to say those things which they had said by God's hand, by God's Spirit rather, not by the hand of man. So, <clears throat> I hope y'all have gotten something out of this, uh, because this is, this is real fun. I like this own debut thing here, right here at the bottom, and uh, let's see here, yeah, so that's what it is right there, I mean, it's pretty neat, I hope I can keep it longer this time, I forgot how long I kept it the first time, I think this is just a trial edition or something, but anyway, I, I hope we got something out of that. But some men are so wrapped up in things that they can see. We, we were wrapped up in it and we were trying to please God with the things that we say and and do. And God's not looking for that. He's looking for someone to worship Him in spirit and truth. People to worship Him in spirit and truth. And He's given His word to help us know the truth. You know, and to, to not really help us to know that we will know the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. And the truth is by faith, that we receive faith by believing in Him. And not what man says, not what people say. You know, and, um, well, my word, my Bible is better than yours. It gives best interpretation. It gives a clear meaning, cut and dry. No, the Lord has given us everything we need for faith and practice. You know, in the authorized version, I believe that myself. Whether you, whatever you believe, that's totally up to you. But I believe that for myself because if God's a God, the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. Father, Son, Holy Ghost is perfect. Then He must be giving us something that has to be perfect too, to understand who He is, what He's done, you know, what He's doing in our lives today. You know what Jesus Christ done for us on the cross. You know, and we get so materialistic. We want things that we can see, grasp, and hold. Say, oh, this is God, this is God, this is God, you know. But really, that's not what it's all about. It's a spiritual thing. It's a thing of the heart. It's a thing of faith that we know who God is by the heart, you know, by, the, by our spirit, rather, you know, and uh, spirit discerning the things of the spirit. So that's all i got to do for right now and kind of get my contacts are driving me crazy, you know. But anyway, I'm going to get off here now. I hope this helps somebody. And I uh, just want to, you know, hope you enjoyed it.